Hey guys, how are you? Are you new to filmmaking? Are you new to the world of videography? Are you thinking about starting a YouTube channel? Have you already got one going? You're having problems. You're making mistakes in video and you're not sure how to correct it. We're going to look at some common video filmmaking mistakes and some solutions on how we can correct them. Let's get into it. The first mistake we're going to look at, it's the same as in photography and that is a distracting background. What's behind you? If it's a mess back there, it's a really busy background, tree coming out of your head, it's distracting and taking your audience away from what's important. And what's important? It's you. You want a pleasant, pleasing background that helps support and make you stand out and make you look your best. You can see how busy and distracting that background is behind me. I don't stand out that well from it because there's so much going on behind. So here I moved into a new location and you can see I pop, I stand out, there's no confusion in behind and I get great separation between the background and I get a more pleasing look to the video. Our next pretty common mistake is filming too much. I was guilty of that when I started out. I was like kind of filming all over here and all over there and I wasn't really focusing and concentrating on what was important. Instead of taking just this one piece of the subject and getting one clip from it, then going on to the next piece and getting another clip to that. You should be creating a shot list so you can flow through your shoot more effectively, you get through it faster and you're gonna get a far better result when you plan and you don't film too much. There's nothing wrong with revealing an area and covering an area, but when you're new to a spot and you're trying to get all the little detail, the hanging basket, the ground, the ground cover, all the little plants, it gets too much and it's too overwhelming in one clip with no clear subject. Break it down, here I'm looking at a specific plant and look at the color of those. We rotate around this hanging basket and we do a nice little pull back from it, leading it to our next ground cover shot where we do a little pan across. Looks great this way. This one I was definitely guilty of, especially when I first started out. I imagine a lot of you were, some of you still may be, and that is spinning too much. You're just looking around and the camera's going with you and it's just, whoa, it's like being on one of those little teacup 360 rides. It's too much, way too much spinning, way too much quick movements. You need to slow down and that's where we come back to our shot list. When you do a shot list, you tend to slow down, you know what you're doing and you're not going to get into the, all these whipping scenes unless you're trying to do a transition where you need to put some whips together. But other than that, you need to slow down and take it easy on that spinning. Hang on to your lunch. This is what I'm talking about with too much spinning, trying to cover too much area. Let's break this down, do a slow pan across the flags to show them in their glorious beauty. Now slow pan across that gorgeous flower bed. Break the shots down into individual shots. Oh, this one I was big time guilty of. When I first got my very first zoom lens, I was zooming in on this and zooming in on that. Too much zooming. Too much zooming can be very distracting. It's almost like when you're whipping your camera around and you're getting all that whipping and looking this and this and that way. Blech. Too much zooming is not a good thing. You can use zooming, but use it effectively and use it at the right place and the right time. Here I'm in an area where I'm doing a bit of moving, some zooming, and you'll see that there's just too much zooming going on. Move, zoom, move, zoom. It's too much and I find it very distracting. You're better off doing individual shots. Here I did a slow pan across, focused on the building in the back, did a zoom in on the building, and then came back into the normal video. The next one is an easy one to fix in this day and age, and that is stopping shaky footage. There's nothing worse than trying to watch a video and the footage is bouncing and swaying and swinging all over the place. Use a tripod, use a monopod, use a gimbal, use a sling, use something. Get those caffeinated hands off of the camera and get working on some stable footage. Look at this footage. Yes, I was making it rock and roll a little more than normal to overemphasize the point, but it just shows you there's nothing worse than watching video that's bouncing all over the place. Look at that now. We've slowed it down, we've stabilized it. Now let's look at these side by side. Which do you prefer watching? It doesn't take much in this day and age to stabilize your footage and get that good, clean, crisp look to it. Our last mistake that I see happening when people are trying to make their little cinematic videos and they're trying to do a move called reveal. What they're doing is that they're sliding their camera from behind something to reveal an area. It's a great way to introduce or end your scene, but the mistake that they're making is they're not locking their focus or exposure and you're getting a shift when you're doing the move. 
this is the wrong way to do it. I'm in focus to out of focus and bang, it pops into focus. That's the wrong way to do it. The right way is I'm out of focus and the background didn't change from out of focus to in focus, it stayed in focus. That's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. These are mistakes that I've made in the past. These are mistakes that I see people making. A lot of this is very easy to correct. We can up our game. We can become better filmmakers, better videographers. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you're aware when I post new videos like this. So until the next time.